Hey guys, it's uh, Joe Lyons from The Automator here. And uh, Isaiah and I, we were talking about, Ryan Wells sent me this article. Um, and let me let me share my screen here. We were talking about the, the Power um, BI and, and Power Automated Desktops. Is that what it's called? Right. Yeah, um, that's what it's called. And there was this announcement that, hey, you know, announcing, and, and it sounds amazing, right? Power Automate Desktop is now available for all Windows 10 users at no cost. At no cost. And I'm like, Providing... Oh, an RPA solution to automate tasks across any application. Now here's um, the thing. Here's the thing. That was actually charged, so that was you had to pay for it, and it was not yeah. cheap. It was like fifty dollars a month or something like that. Was the lowest price that they had? Actually, the last time that you showed me this was about like uh, thirty to fifty dollars a month for the yeah. lowest price for the uh, power automate yeah. desktop. And 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 uh, not that I'm skeptical, but I um. I'll pretend that Microsoft and their goodwill is like, hey, let's make this free. We want to help people. Because uh, my feeling is like nobody was signing up for it. Um, and so they're like, you know what, let's just make it free and maybe people will start using it. Um, well, you can be cynical about it, right? Yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but, but basically, basically the, the, main, um, the main announcement comes as something to be welcomed. That's very good, actually. Fair enough. One of sure. the things, yeah, so one of the things right. that uh, we, we as programmers struggle with is automating stuff, especially because every program has its own way of doing things, right? So if, uh, and, and now there's this tool that allows you to do a lot of interesting stuff by using a GUI, well, man, uh, welcome. <laughs> Let's have it. Let's have it. <laughs> well, and, and to your point, it, it, you know, it says to automate any program, right? Um, I'll bet you, and this is, I know you and I were working on this, is that that's probably used the UI automation, you know, um, yes. architecture to, to be Very able to likely. do this. Very um, so we, we, well, you know, I downloaded it and uh, let's see here. This is, this is the, oh, that's the nitty gritty one. I mean, here's the overall, like you create a workflow um, and then, but then you can say, hey, let me record. Like here, I could say, do a web recorder. Um, it's going to come up and say, well, what do I, so I'm doing a, in this example, sorry, I'm trying to automate a, a browser. Um, and I actually played with it with both Edge and Chrome. Um, let's start off with Edge here. We'll just do a little demo of like, okay, it's going to come in here. Oh, and this is weird, but okay, now I'm going to start recording. Great. Actually, I guess I don't want that up there. Um, you're, you're actually, um, what I noticed is that you didn't pick what which tab you wanted to use, but in this case, it just grabbed the messenger.com thing. So you have to be careful on that one. Yeah. So, so, so use, right. So if you cancel that, right, just cancel. Cancel, cancel and restart. Right. Yeah. So if you if you start here, right, we'll and record, yeah, we'll record this. Select picture. Chrome, but but if it advanced, there's the browser. And again, you don't have Edge open. That's the reason. But if you select yeah. Chrome, which is open, it actually gives you at the bottom pick a tab so you can choose right. which tab you want to start with, right? So now you have the so you now, now Microsoft.com page. And if I click in here, uh, you actually have to start recording, I think. I I thought I I guess I did that right. last. Yeah, right. There it goes. Okay. I don't know why I took it, but so it's it's highlighting elements, um, you know, at, at different things, which is cool. We've seen this with like the IWB2 learner tool and um, someday the, the tool will release for Chrome, um, which is doing the same thing. Um, or I can right click. And I can say what, you know, some things I want to do. I could extract the element and it kind of gives you a preview here. Um, and if I remember right, that'll store it. It'll ask you someone here, what do you want to store it into? Like a variable and this Maybe and that. And, and yeah. Now, and this is where Isaiah said that we were chatting a bit of like, hey, that, you know, that's neat and cool. However, and he's, Isaiah is far more advanced than I, than I am on this part of things. But once you understand how people build web pages, <laughs> Like you, you instantly know, like if this thing isn't using an ID or several class names, like the reliability is going to be crap, you know? And here's the other thing, which we know, cause we do this a lot, right? But the average person that works on computers, you know, they're, they don't know these things. Um, right. Now, now I, I will say if we actually went in and said, let's record something from Excel or like even Outlook, it probably has a much more reliability, right? Because yes. um, those things are locked down and, and Excel is Excel is Excel, right? But a web page, everyone builds them all differently and all the stuff and like, holy cow. Now, now let me go ahead and uh, make kind of like the distinction there. So one thing is to automate a task 
And another one would be scraping data. And that's the problem. So this thing is very good at automating very repeatable tasks. So if you're doing exactly the same movements over and over again, this might work perfectly fine. Now, as soon as you try to do something a little bit more advanced, like for example, go to this web page and grab this information yep. in order. Now, that might come as something a little bit more complicated to do here. I see on the left side that we do have some actions, very interesting options. And um, in the middle of the screen, let me go ahead and see if I could just annotate this here, because it's very important. I see that you have kind of something called subflows, which for me as a programmer tells me that I could create a function. So here I would think about this main thing as the main function. Mm -hmm. And I could create kind of like different functions or sub functions, um, which would allow me to do more complex tasks. That's what I'm thinking. That, that, that's what I see when I see this. That's what it comes to mind, right? When you say complex, I mean, to, to me, I, th I thought you were going to say to, to compartmentalize what you're doing and have repeatable things, but you, you but, but really I, I need more. Would, what, actually, what I, would, what I would expect is that here on my main function, I could call another sub routine i could actually kind of like call it there um so for example i want to and this is it goes to the the part so if you can go to the first web page for so can you go to the next to the page no no just yeah right here so just just cancel that if you can so just cancel it here i just want to see this page just click on the web page that, that be behind here oh right so um what i wanted to do is uh those, I know that they are kind of like a specific div or P, for example, in HTML, right? So I want my program to go one by one and grab the next P, right? So I could have a, a subroutine that goes one by one, one of those uh, lines and grabs it. And I could have another subroutine that actually does this on different lists. So I could go like I could grab one subroutine and call it from another one. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Well, well, and, and see, that's what I was meaning by your compart you're, you're making it small as doing one thing and then you repurpose it later in other right. things. Like exactly. it's just this, exactly. like, like a function or a go sub kind of thing. Like, like this is all this does. Okay, now I have that. Yeah. That's what that idea uh, brings to mind. When, it, when I see like sub flows, what I'm thinking yep. is like, okay, I can compartmentalize uh, yeah. stuff and just go Which, to that later on. Yeah, and and again, um, you know, is the average person going to know that? You know, probably not. But if you, that's the smart way to do it, right? Uh, Find yeah. these, you know, the, the build these little things that are reliable, and then you repurpose them and stop doing so everything every time. You just hit in a very important point. So now this tool is going to allow me to automate stuff. But do I have the mind or the training right. or the knowledge to do it in a correct way? Very likely, most of the people, what they're going to do is just do something that works, right? But if somebody else takes a look and says, oh, well, you could have done it this way, right? Now, a lot of tasks might be very complex and would require you to know more or less how to structure that into code which this I would actually refer to as automating code, right? So basically you would need some kind of experience. And I think, as you mentioned before, uh, many corporate Americans, like, are they gonna have the knowledge to do that? Um, I'm not really sure. I think they're gonna do very quick stuff that they do often and that's it, right? No. Again, very good, excellent that is up for us, right? But right. I still think that this might be a very, very, very good option for developers to actually help other people. Like, yeah, I can automate that for you. Agreed, yeah. What would be interesting, which I don't see it yet, and granted, I haven't dug around, but um, I'm curious, you know how with the uh, uh, pullovers macro recorder for AutoHotKey, mm -hmm. he, he has a lot of kind of similar stuff, at the same time, you see the syntax, the auto hockey code behind the scenes, and that you can okay. then go in and manipulate and change and tweak and adapt. I didn't, I haven't seen that here yet. However, that's I to me what would be seen. really cool is, is hey, I still have a GUI tool to help me kind of build this stuff, but then I can look at the code that's getting written, written in, you know, make those tweaks that are, you know, like really. 
Yeah, first of all, right. I'm not really sure in which language uh, which language right. is using. Right, so this is first. Uh, maybe it is C sharp, or probably it's just creating VBA scripts. We don't know. Um, I'm gonna dig a little bit about that because I haven't actually really uh, taken a look at the whole tool. Uh, like yep. uh, now that it is free, now I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at it and see more or less what it's doing. But if it is actually creating a VBA script, it would be very interesting that it actually shows the VBA code in there, right? Yeah. Or a, well, what's .NET stuff written in? Is that C sharp? Uh, well, something? .NET is just kind of like a like a framework. Libraries. Like got, yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of libraries, and actually, if you you can use .NET stuff in different languages, you can actually yeah, use okay. C plus plus to uh, do .NET things. But um, usually, .NET was actually created for C sharp. So usually, okay, because written would be C sharp. And maybe I'm wrong, but my understanding was like basically VBA. You know, Office no longer has VBA really stuff in it. The, the newer versions are getting rid of it. Um, I thought it was .NET was more of the architecture that they were using. Um, yeah, but anyway. But I, yeah, so basically right now they're kind of like distancing themselves from VBA in that particular yeah. sense. Um, but as for this tool specifically, I'm not really sure. Well, like what I'd just be really surprised if it had a VBA, you know. Right. Uh, it would be, but anyway, it would be, it would be yeah. no matter what it is, right? Uh, yeah. But again, back to your point, and that's what we were discussing. Hey, you know, 20 years ago, people used to actually, you know, use the built-in uh, VBA macro recorders in Excel and other things. And it was a prevalent <laughs> thing, right? People often did this. Today's workplace, like, no, so that's the thing. So basically, yeah. what, what I could say about that uh, would be like, okay, uh, imagine you came you came from a DOS background. You were used to just seeing a black screen, type commands onto it, and somebody told you, like, now we have graphical user interfaces. You're like, oh, great, but still you have to type a lot. And somebody said, like, okay, here you have VBA, which is going to make your life easier. Of course, that makes it like very easy. Everybody knows VBA at that time, right? Right, right. But now, now what happens is that uh, kids are waking up to Google, Facebook, and this huge tech companies that have everything solved. They have nothing to do with typing code on a screen. You know what? We tell them like, use VBA. And they're going to say like, that's harder. That's Isaiah, I, I'd even say you can you can take everything you said and even apply it to developers. Because I even see developers yes. who say, they don't even program anymore. They're connecting things with GUIs, you know, and they're programmers or developers. Actually, I, I saw this guy who, who was actually touching on that. He was saying like, uh, software developers right now, what they do is that they just know a lot of APIs and they just connect the APIs. Right, right. 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 So, so basically, and it is true. Most of, you can do an amazing app just connecting several APIs. That's right. It. Yeah. So, so again, going back to okay, here's something. Write code, and they're gonna say like, really? No, 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 no. I I just use Google's API for that. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. You know what? Actually, I was gonna say not not to, to plug it, but you know our intro to GUIs course. It's, it gets about to just, like having a GUI is almost a requirement if you want something to go viral, right? Like right, it's gotta right. have a GUI. You, you, you cannot you cannot you cannot have um, a command line tool any he, longer, right? Years ago. Like my my grandfather um, and my mentor, uh, basically, they they uh, they had computer cards, and they were basically like a piece of paper like this with holes in it, right, and they right, would put right. their program and put it in, and the next right. day they'd come back and get results. Right? It forced them to be very sure what they were doing would actually work because computer time was limited and everything. Right? And they really had no doing. And then it switched over to more of like syntax with programming. Right? And then. And then it switched to GUIs. And suddenly with GUIs, before people knew, I don't know what in the world I'm doing with, with a, like the punch cards or syntax. Mm -hmm. Like It's very obvious you don't know what you're doing. With a GUI, almost know. anyone can kind of make it look like they know what they're doing. I'm just going to keep man. clicking stuff, you know, and like, hopefully this will work. Well, I'm kind of, and that's what kind of scares me with this is it can Basically, be a giant time are, suck. Yeah. And some crazy stuff written that you're like, why? Why do you have like? Actually, you know, when I was demonstrating this earlier um, with you, I was clicking, and I and I should have right clicked to say extract, but I accidentally was click left clicking, and it was recording the left clicks. Those clicks, and, right? You know, and and a lot of people would not even think twice about like leaving those in there. Like, no, 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 D delete those. Those those don't be needed. You know. And then at the end, you're gonna have this list of <laughs> right. actions right. that right. They don't, you don't care about them, but right. they're there. 
Now, again, that's the reason why I still say like, you know what? I think programmers and developers might still use this to help a lot of people because again, even though it is kind of like democratizing uh, programming and automation to people, yep. I don't think a lot of people are going to have the time to spend it on it. And, uh, and the ones who do might not even have the, the, the necessary like care to do it in a way that is efficient or good. Right. They just want something to work. Right. And yeah, it's okay. But again, you want something good, well, then pay for it. I can do it for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I can yeah, exactly. It. Yeah. I can yeah. do and that. And kudos again. I, I don't mean to knock Microsoft for, you know, dropping. Uh, hey, that's great. They're opening it up. That's awesome. Right. That's a, it's a great thing. It is. It's just, is it really going to, are we suddenly going to see all these people starting to use it? Um, we got to work on training the mindset of people in the workforce on how to do these things. And more importantly, in my experience is actually to, educate you know make sure the bosses know that that you should be investing in your employees and let them either you know you'll get paid to actually learn or at least pay for their courses offsite because unfortunately like i know you and i both we, we always just take it on ourselves right i don't care if someone's yeah. paying me or not i'm gonna learn right. something we just right? do it. <laughs> right. but, but some people they don't have that nowadays don't have that mindset and the employers should understand Hey, if they actually are more productive, you know, right. it, it we benefit. So, so yes. they should be paying for it. But that is for sure. I agree. Awesome. All right. Well, it was good chatting. I'll um I'll put the link to the uh, to the article and where I downloaded the the program from in the, cool. the chat here in the description. But good talking. Excellent. Cheers. Same to you. Bye bye.